How do you build a box with the maximum volume? In this lesson, you will learn how to analyze a physical context by examining a function. Let's review. This is the graph of a polynomial function. It has a relative maximum at this point and a relative minimum at this point. It has two intervals where the function is increasing and one interval where the function is decreasing. We can also identify the zeros of the function at these three points. We consider these the zeros of the function because the output at each point is zero. We have two intervals where the function is positive and two intervals where the function is negative. A common misunderstanding. Relative extrema are not the same as absolute extrema. This graph has a relative maximum. While there are points higher than this point, there's no absolute maximum. We consider this point to be the relative maximum because it is the highest of the points closest to it. This graph also has a relative minimum. While there are points lower than this point, there is no absolute minimum. We consider this point to be the relative minimum because it is the lowest of the points closest to it. Now let's take a look at the v of h function that we created in earlier lessons. Remember, the v of h function stands for the volume of a box as a function of its height. We created this function by first taking a piece of cardboard that measured 10 inches by 14 inches, cutting a square out of each corner, folding up the sides to create a box. Then to create the graph of the function, we first made a table of points by selecting input values, plugging them into our function to get these output values, and creating a grid. Notice that the grid has a domain of negative 2 to 10 and a range of negative 200 to 300 to fit all of our points. Then we plotted our points, connected the points to get this polynomial graph. Let's take a closer look at our function, and let's use it to find the maximum volume of the box. We have a relative maximum at the point 1.92,120.16. Because the output of our function is the volume of the box, our maximum volume should be 120.16 inches cubed. But aren't these volumes larger than 120.16 inches cubed? Well, let's find out why we can't use these. To do this, let's take a closer look at our positive intervals. Our first positive interval occurs between the values of 0 and 5. Let's take our volume function and select a number, such as 2, to plug in. If we plug 2 in and follow our order of operations, we get that volume at a height of 2 inches is equal to the quantity of 14 minus 4 times the quantity of 10 minus 4 times 2. Following our order of operations again, we get the volume at a height of 2 is equal to 10 times 6 times 2. Notice that length, width, and height are all positive. By multiplying these values together, we get the volume at a height of 2 as 120 inches cubed. Because the volume came out positive and all of our dimensions are positive, we can use any value between 0 and 5 for the height of the box. Now let's look at our, uh, our second positive interval. For all heights greater than 7, let's select a height greater than 7, such as 9, and plug it into our function. If we follow our order of operations, we get volume at a height of 9 inches is equal to the quantity of 14 minus 18 times the quantity of 10 minus 18 times 9. If we follow our order of operations again, we get the volume at a height of 9 is equal to negative 4 times negative 8 times 9. Notice that in this case, length and width are both negative while height is positive. If we multiply these values together, we get volume at a height of 9 inches is 288 inches cubed. While our volume did come out positive, our length and width were negative. This means that we cannot use any heights greater than 7, because we cannot have length and width that are, ne that are negative. This is physically impossible. Now let's look at our graph again. Notice we are only using a domain going up to 7 now. Let's find the minimum volume. We have a relative minimum at the point 6.08 comma negative 24.16. This must mean that our minimum volume is negative 24.16 inches cubed. But what's wrong with this? Well, we can't have a negative volume. This is physically impossible. The smallest volume that we can have is 0. This means that we have two points that have minimum volume. 
at 0 and at 5. Let's find out why we can't use the negative intervals of our graph. Our first negative interval occurs for heights less than 0. Well, we can't have a height less than 0 for our box, so this is physically impossible. Our second negative interval occurs between 5 and 7. Since it dips below the h axis, this gives us negative volumes, which again are physically impossible. This means that we can't use any heights less than 0, and we cannot use any heights between 5 and 7. So we started with a function that had a domain of all real numbers. After taking a closer look at the context that surrounded it, we were able to restrict the domain to only include numbers between 0 and 5. Let's summarize. Let's look at our function again with its restricted domain between 0 and 5. Remember, the height must be between 0 and 5 inches. The maximum volume occurs at 120.16 inches cubed. This is the relative maximum of our graph. The minimum volume is 0 inches cubed. While these two points do not make the relative minimum of the graph, the relative minimum gave us a negative volume, and volume cannot be negative. In this lesson, you learned how to analyze a physical context by examining a function.